Okay, we're back. We're live at the five o'clock clock today um, on a given hmm, Tuesday after Labor Day, I guess. And we have uh, Eugene Tian. He is the state economist of the state of Hawaii. And we want to talk to him about what the future looks like in the economy. Um, the state DBED recently published a report about this. We want to ask him about the report and his forecasting, um, especially now, especially when there is such uncertainty. And we want to know how that uncertainty is going to affect the economy going forward. Eugene, thank you so much for appearing. You're welcome. So um, I guess the first thing is, what does the state economist do? You make economic analyses. You look at all these factors and variables and whatnot. And then you give, you give uh, DBED, I guess, uh, a, a handle on where it's all going. But where does that go from there? Uh, does it go to the legislature, does it go to the governor? They go to the public, uh, where does it go and who does what with it? Hey, Jay, a good uh, question. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And uh, it's a good question to ask, uh, what do we do, uh, our uh, government economists in my office? Uh, my office, we have four branches and we have uh, one branch is called economic research branch. Uh, we do economic studies. Uh, in terms of, uh, we have a whole bunch of reports on our website, uh, including the legislature mandated studies. For example, the film tax credit, what is the economic impact of mm -hmm. film tax credit? Mm -hmm. And we have uh, studies on the real property taxes. And we have studies on the um, uh, research activity tax credit. What is the impact of those? So there's many and I have branch and you heard about the labor statistics. Every month we have the unemployment rate, how many jobs, how many people employed, how many people unemployed. That's one group in uh, my division. I have another division called tourism research. So that division, uh, that branch published data on a monthly basis, how many visitors come to Hawaii and uh, how much they spent, where they came from, which island they visited, those kind of thing. And then we have another branch is compiling the state of Hawaii data book. And they also work with the US Census Bureau on population data. Actually our office is the only state office partnered with the US Census Bureau on population. If we wanna know anything about population, how many Japanese, how many Vietnamese, where do they live? What is their income? How many male, female? That's our office. So that is a general. So what is your relationship with the Council on Revenues? Because we know the legislature looks very carefully at them uh, to decide uh, how much money they can spend. Do you, do you inform the council or does the council inform your office? They actually, they are an independent uh, entity and they do a forecast, the revenue forecast for the state and the state uh, has to uh, namely the budget and finance office, they have to use the council forecast to budget uh, state spending. They actually just completed a meeting today at about, uh, I think they started at two and uh, concluded at four o'clock. So they do forecast the state uh, general fund revenue based on the economy. And of course this uh, big uncertainty uh, due to the uh, Delta variant is also uh, in, in the play for the projection. Yeah, one more thing is um, I would imagine that the money committees, uh, the committees um, that determine how much money the legislature is gonna spend on a given bill or a given you know, subject uh, would, would actually call you on the telephone and say, Eugene, we have a question and, and that you help them. And they use that information uh, in order to make decisions about how much money we have and we're going to spend. Am I right about that? Uh, you're correct. Uh, yes, they do. Uh, you might need uh, for a briefing at least uh, every year at the beginning of the year, usually in the first a few days in January, they asked me to uh, give a presentation to the money, the two committees about what is happening in the economy and also uh, in the presentation, they uh, usually invite uh, the chair of a council revenue, and they also invite uh, your hero, uh, Dr. Carl Bonham, 
to uh, speak on behalf of the new heroes uh, projection. And uh, during the legislation or during uh, a uh, normal time, they do uh, contact me about my view about the economy, of, about the tax revenue and the uh, economic impact. I'm also uh, a member of the House Select uh, Committee uh, on uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. That puts you in a very important spot. You know, when I went to college, they always told me that uh, economics was an art more than a science. Um, do you agree with that? And do you guys, you, ec you economists here in Hawaii, do you always agree on things? I think you're right because the people who get uh, the degree from economics, and they are actually uh, a bachelor of art rather than bachelor of economics. And the uh, definition of economics, uh, economics is a choice of science. So we make choices on a daily basis, government or individual. You um, make a choice because you have limited resources in terms of time, in terms of money, financial resources. But there are many things you want to do, but then you are constrained by a limited resource. Then you need to make a choice. But what kind of choice you should make? Once you make a choice, you give up something. So you want to make the best choice to your uh, benefit. That's why it is called uh, uh, economics is a science of choice. So you're in these meetings, other economists around, other people who have studied economists, uh, you know, economics. Uh, do you agree with them? Do they agree with you? Do you ever find yourself in a situation where you're at opposite ends of an argument? Uh, we do have uh, sometimes have argument on the, uh, we have different views on the economy because even uh, in the economic field that we have uh, uh, different branches and there is a mandatory economist talking about money controls the interest rate. And there is uh, a, a new classical or classical economists. Uh, the view is that uh, the government should not intervene in the economy, let the economy adjust themselves. <laughs> and there is uh, economists uh, interested in the government, government uh, intervention. And the economy cannot uh, reach a point, government need to guide to uh, reach to a certain point. So there are so many different branches and we do have some, uh, sometimes we have uh, differences and we uh, have arguments, but uh, I think that will help. If you look at the same issue from this different angle, I think it's always a uh, good thing. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, one thing is that um, when you look at this from a college level, it, it, it is definitely an art, and it was an art um, when I went to college and took economics. But, you know, since then, mathematics has caught up with us. Mathematics has developed, um, you know, with the help of, um, you know, electronic calculations, uh, it developed predi pre prediction analysis. Uh, I went to a, um, a program at UH a couple of years ago that kind of blew my mind about how you could predict bloody anything using predictive analysis. And I wonder, you know, whether, you know, when you go from taking a bachelor's in economics to a PhD, that that whole mathematical modeling is what you learn in the graduate degrees and what you, Eugene, are looking at uh, when you're trying to do predictions. Are you doing predictive mathematics? Yes, uh, the uh, tool we use uh, is called uh, econometrics. Econometrics is the uh, mathematical uh, method. And in a lot of people, the, uh, the term they call, uh, call regression analysis, but there are so many different models, even using regression, there are so many different models. Uh, uh, we do all, we are all trained and everybody in my office use uh, some kind of econometric model to project what it will be happening in the future. I think is uh, because most of them are based on the past trend, uh, even the past 20 years or past uh, 30 years. It depends on 
what the variable, then we look into the future, uh, see what the trend. I think as we talk at the beginning, the, we use the past trend a lot of times, the projection is stable, but we don't get in, uh, into consideration is the daily changes. And for example, the current, the Delta variant, the COVID cases is increasing, it has been increasing since August. And because of that, there are so many things, uh, for example, um, starting next week, uh, there will be restrictions uh, for Oahu residents if they go to restaurant. And uh, because of the governor's decision on travel, and I think we uh, cautioned that, the governor cautioned that uh, it is not a good timing for now to visit Hawaii because of the COVID cases. The airlines, they have been adjusting their flights schedule on a daily basis. So that's why I look at the data, I look at it every day, I look at it, what is the uh, booking for hotels and the uh, airline schedule for the flights. And they look at it, what happened in the uh, job count. And we have the weekly unemployment claims. And we also have the daily passengers and daily visitors coming to the state. I look at it daily, the data, and see what will happen. Yeah, I don't know how you do that these days. I mean, back in the day, uh, the data would not change every day or every hour. Now uh, you get new data every day, every hour, yeah, yeah. and you have to factor that in because professionally you, you have to include all the data you can get your hands on. And so, um, you know, if you're looking for uncertainty, you can find uncertainty. Finally, and, and this, is, this seems to me to be getting clearer and clearer, a lot of this data um, is, is like, it reflects sociological changes. It reflects changes in the way people think. Their, you know, their sentiments. Um, and you can learn this from surveys, I suppose. You can learn it from social media, social changes, if you will. So you look at the data and then you say, hmm, the data really depends on these social, social and sentiment changes. I have to look at that too. And before you know it, you're swimming um, in, uh, in a sea of change every day. How do you sleep at night, Eugene? <laughs> yes, I think uh, it's the technology because the technology changes uh, is the, uh, the uh, broadband internet. And we have this program called the Safe Travel Program started October 15th, uh, 2020. And everybody coming to Hawaii, they have to register online. So every day we get the uh, who are coming, if they are returning residents, if they are in transit or they are visitors for a vacation or they are getting married. So we have those data on a daily basis. That's why I get those numbers on every day to see what is the change. And we do see a big decrease since the beginning of August. And we do the main tool for us to get the data, uh, you are right. Uh, is survey. We do a lot of surveys on the daily basis. We do survey for labor. You know, we find how many people are employed, unemployed. And we do surveys on visitors and we know where they, uh, they visit. They are happy or they, they are not happy. We also ask the residents. We do surveys on residents. Are you happy with the tourism? And, and those kind of things. We also do surveys. That's why we find how many businesses were closed in April. 60% of the businesses were closed. And how many, how many businesses were open in March this year, 2021? That's why we found out it's about 92% of our businesses mm. opened as of March, 2021. Mm. That's pretty interesting. You know, what, one thing is uh, as a state economist, you may have a different orientation than for example, a business economist. I uh, can remember a time when both of the big banks uh, had economists on their staff. Uh, Paul Brubaker was Bank of Hawaii. Yeah. And uh, he always took the position that uh, don't, don't talk to me about economic diversification. It isn't going to happen. He always said that. And I always disagreed with him about it. 
Um, and I guess uh, I'm not sure that that's that's kind of the pessimistic view of things. But the government would not necessarily want to be pessimistic because what you say is act actually a factor in the way business reacts to the economy. If uh, you or the Fed, for example, makes a statement that's negative, um, then you know the market goes down <laughs> because you you carry a big stick. Um, so the question is, how how do you cope with that? Uh, are, are, in your heart, are you pessimistic? Or are you optimistic? And uh, as part of the government, what what are your leanings to be sure that you're not creating a factor that will uh, have an effect uh, that you don't want to have? Yeah, I think uh, we as an economist, uh, we try to be as objective as possible. And we uh, use, we tell stories about the fact uh, rather than uh, telling anything beyond the fact. Uh, but I think for myself, I think uh, you, we look at the data, we see uh, many things are encouraging. For example, uh, during the first seven months up to July, the economy, uh, economic recovery was great. For example, as of July, the tourism recovery is 88.4% compared with the same months 2019. So it's 88.4%. And in terms of job count, the payroll job count, recovery is exactly the same, 88.4%. So then coming to August, it will be a pause. It doesn't mean that it will be a, a, a it will have a negative, but it's just a slow. Because as of uh, today, uh, we see, we still have, a lot of visitors, we have about 20,000 visitors a day coming to Hawaii. So we have, uh, it's not, I think the demand is still there. You know, after September, October, those two months, I think we expect it will be slowing down, but uh, the demand and the recovery will be fast uh, starting in November and December. Okay, God, I hope so. You know, so often it's just a question of timing. <laughs> you know that something's going to happen. You just don't know exactly when it's going to happen. I mean, I can tell you at some point in the future, the market will go up. And uh, then we can disagree as to when. Or I can tell you that at some point in the future, the market will go down. And it will. We can just disagree about when. <laughs> so so we're, we're looking at uncertainty today. And I want to look at the uh, report that... Uh, you issued, uh, and this part is called major factors um, of concerns, including these. And I wanted to, I want to read them to you, actually, Eugene, and, and ask you, um, you know, how these factors play, okay, in determining the future of the Hawaii economy. Okay, COVID cases surged since late July. Um, the average seven-day daily new infections were 49.2 cases per 100,000. Uh, and ranked the 17th highest among all the states. Um, the US seven day uh, daily new cases were 43.1 per 100,000, and that's lower. Before the entire duration of uh, the pandemic, March 7th last year through August 21 this year, Hawaii continues to have, uh, have had the lowest infection rate and the lowest death rate in the nation. So how does that, that data affect your view of the uncertainty going forward and the you know, forecast going forward. Yes, uh, the, uh, we did a forecast in May. So our forecast uh, without this, uh, the, the surge in the cases, uh, actually this surge started in late July. Our forecast uh, for the economic growth was 3.5% for 2021. But in our new forecast, uh, late uh, August, we projected 2.7% uh, is a reduction by 0.8 percentage point. So the uh, main factor is the uncertainty caused by the uh, Delta variant. I think by the time of the release, uh, our writing was, uh, Hawaii was uh, around 17th place. But if we look at the data today, Hawaii is getting worse. So we ranked today, we ranked 11th highest in the nation. 
uh, with 51.5 cases per 100,000 population, while the US cases were 38.4 cases per 100,000 population. So we are getting worse. But the projection actually took into account that the situation will last for two months for September and October. But I do hope that the uh, case, in this situation will go over quickly. Uh, it hopefully is not going to last until the end of October. And for example, I do watch the hotel uh, bookings on a daily basis. I do like uh, watch the airline uh, schedule. Uh, for example, the Air Canada, they just suspended uh, flights to Hawaii uh, from this month until this week and uh, on September yesterday until uh, for a month until October 7th. So they will resume October 7th. So from the airline point of view, they think this situation may be over in a month. So if you look at the airline schedules, we do have a, a flat in September. We have a small, uh, we have a decrease in October about 2% in terms of air seat. But then we have about 13.5% increase in November. So that is consistent with our forecast that we will be slow in September and October, uh, we will be uh, coming back in November. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's perfectly um, you know, useful to see these business organizations make their predictions. And then you can look at that as one of the factors that you would consider because uh, they, they know more perhaps about their industry uh, than anyone else does. You know? um, I, I also wanted to mention the, the, this, um, this thing was in the newspaper today about how the median home price in Hawaii had now exceeded a million dollars. Uh, and that's an optimistic point, I guess. And that tells you people are willing to spend more money on homes in Hawaii. But what does it mean to you as an economist looking at the picture um, and, you know, and, and cranking the whole real estate market into your analysis? I think there are two, um, three things are connected. One is the real estate market is booming, is a, a, a worldwide phenomenon. It's not only for the US, uh, for Hawaii and for the world as well. And the reason is there is a limited supply. So the listing, the multiple listing has a smaller number compared with the previous years. And the demand is strong. Although we have the COVID, but our income actually increased. So the personal income increase in 2020 is actually increased by 16.4% for the first quarter. So our household do have money is because of the federal government. So far as of today, the federal government has allocated 19, over $19 billion to the state. You think about the comparison, the comparison with the visitor expenditure. The visitor expenditure for the whole year is less than 18 billion, it's about 17.8 billion. So the final government allocated uh, about 19.2 billion already. So that a lot of them came to the household as unemployment insurance, as the, um, you know, we all receive a check from the uh, Donald, uh, President Donald Trump uh, on the $1,200 uh, per person, those kind of uh, uh, government assistance. So people have money, the demand is high for uh, real estate. And also the uh, supply is uh, low. I think there's uh, some reason that uh, the uh, sellers is holding up. They may have some, uh, some uh, hard time to uh, get out of their renters because of the uh, protection and uh, because of the real estate, uh, we see the construction industry is booming. Sure. Yeah. And we see the, uh, the construction industry for the first half year increase by uh, about uh, uh, 45%. You know, what, one, one thing they also taught us in college economics, Eugene, was that at the end of the day, it was all about public confidence. 
and you had to find a way to ascertain public confidence because because that would ultimately affect markets. Um, how how can we do that at a time when public confidence is not high, uh, where people worry about whether the government is going to do uh, the infrastructure bills? You know that that could mean you know as much as uh, four point five. Did I get this right? Four point five trillion dollars, some of which would come to Hawaii uh, or not, but it wouldn't do anything. So that's hanging in the balance and the impact is huge on, on both possibilities of that dilemma. Uh, so public confidence may, may suffer or may be benefited by what happens in Washington. And actually you don't know from day to day what's gonna happen. Can you talk about public confidence and what affects public confidence and how that affects the economy? Yeah, I think uh, you uh, can tell from the demand for housing is one. And also you, you see the stock market performance. And you also see the visitor coming. Actually, uh, we do see uh, from the TIC data, uh, we do see the total traveling, the travelers nationwide is actually a little decrease in the beginning of August, but for the nation is backing up. It's stable, is uh, is uh, is increasing in uh, since last week, but Hawaii is uh, continue to decrease. And but now the the trouble, if we compare with the beginning of the year, and U.S. Hawaii, in terms of uh, the growth is about the same. So from those three things, you look at the housing demand, you look at the uh, the the visitors are coming, and that's the demand. You look at the construction, people do feel confident. And the, those are current cases, it does uh, making a lot of people feel uh, pessimistic. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I think the majority of people, majority of the people feel that uh, the future is good. I think they have a lot of hope and the government I think uh, one thing they may rely on government assistance because the 4.5 trillion, there will be 2.8 billion coming to Hawaii. So those money will help Hawaii's economy hiring people, uh, especially in the field of the construction uh, investment. So that, that will help the economy. I think the, uh, the pandemic actually put uh, the government uh, had the federal government has put in a lot of money to the state and uh, as I, I, I said, the household do see an uh, increase in uh, household income. So what do you say to the people who say in, in Congress um, that you know we're giving too much money to people who uh, as soon as they get the money stay home, they don't want to take a job. And as a matter of fact, there are more jobs than there are people applying for jobs. And the whole thing is skewed when you give away too much money. Uh, so we shouldn't give as much money away. Um, what do you say to them uh, from an economic point of view? That is uh, possible, you know, because of the government assistance. Uh, but I think that the main, uh, main thing for Hawaii is the uh, kind of job. Uh, because Hawaii, if you look at the job opening in the last uh, eight months, the opening is actually in the professional services and uh, uh, business administration. But uh, we lost job in the tourism sector. So the tourism sector in terms of uh, jobs recovery, although the statewide total recovery is 88.4%, but for the tourism, the recovery is only about 70%. So we have a lot of jobs in the tourism industry, but they are not, the people are employed, they don't fit the professional services job because those jobs need a special training and special uh, degree. So there is a mismatch, at least in Hawaii. Yeah, that's another phenomenon. You know, we talk about uncertainty um, and pessimism or optimism, what have you, but it seems to me there's another factor in play. I wonder if you're cranking that in. And this is the factor of, um, you know, we are at a turning point. My life is at a turning point. 
I don't want to go back to a minimum wage job, for example, in a restaurant. Uh, I want to do something better, so I'm going to I'm going to wait it out until something better comes along for me. And uh, you know, I've heard it said that a lot of people feel that way. Uh, they are they are waiting for something better. Um, they are not going to go back to the way it was. Uh, we are in a transitional moment as far as the labor force is concerned. Do you agree? Exactly. I do agree with you. I think uh, that's why uh, I think this pandemic may change the uh, people's way of working. And that's why I said uh, we do uh, the main uh, tool we use is survey. We currently is doing a survey on the remote work, uh, remote work survey. We survey both employers and employees, and I want to see their willingness and their practice and their pros and cons of uh, working from home. So the survey is currently um, ongoing. So that is uh, a way, I think, at least for the uh, remote work, uh, it is uh, one of the ways is going to, is going to um, stay or develop in the future. I think this uh, remote work is also impact the real estate because uh, I think the demand for a single families uh, at the, at the, you know, uh, far from the urban center, uh, it may, uh, because people, they can work from home anywhere. It doesn't need to be in the urban center. So that's why uh, we see the demand for a single family. I think you see the Oahu uh, average length on the market is about nine days. It's very short. Yeah, wow. That's never been like that as long, not, not lately anyway. You know, one, the one thing that all suggests to me, Eugene, is that our economy, to go further, our society is being remade by these forces, by these considerations, even as we speak. And when we come out the other side, it's hard to say when that would be, but when we come out the other side, see the light in the tunnel and we emerge, hope that's soon, um, we're going to find that our world from an economic, uh, a social, societal point of view is different. Uh, do you agree with that? Yes, I think uh, there's uh, a lot of things will be changed. I think after this, uh, when the pandemic is over, and actually uh, we are, the Hawaii Economic Association is holding a annual conference on October 7th and 8th. So there we are going to talk about, I think one subject you may uh, like is we are talking about uh, how are we going to have a trade-off between tourism and the other sectors, and namely is uh, diversification. And how do we develop other sectors? And what are the views of visitors? And what are the views of our residents? So what are the changes uh, dur during this uh, pandemic? What will be uh, the future look like? Mm. Oh, that's very juicy, uh, especially in, you know, in, in the observation that in the, I've made over the years. Um, but let me ask you this, um, you know, if, of course, it's, it's a long way, it's several months to the legislature. Uh, well, it's not several months to what the governor could do. What, you know, what, what would be the, the first step, the kind of steps we should take to improve our economic picture based on what you know today? Uh, what, what are the most important things to do um, by him, by the, uh, the governor, by the legislature, um, by the agencies, if you will? Um, to uh, in, enhance the possibilities. Is diversification one of them? How important is that? I think this is a very good question, but this question is actually uh, a very good question to the administration. And I'm an economist working under the administration. Uh, as I said, I only uh, talk uh, based on the fact I see, but I don't uh, make any uh, policy calls. And uh, I think that uh, what the government is going to do and based on the current situation to um, help the economy, to develop the economy, uh, I don't think I'm in a position to uh, <laughs> speak for that. Uh, but I do feel that uh, there will be, I think the, I do feel confident about the economy. And I do feel the pent up demand is very strong, both from local 
and as well as from the visitors. And you can see the booking, the hotel booking actually has been increasing. If you look at the uh, going into forward as March, 2022, is the booking are still very strong. So, um, but I do believe that uh, we, uh, our projection for, uh, for example, we do believe by the end of this year, December, the visitor arrivals will be 100% recovered from the December 2019. And we will see how the COVID cases develop. Mm. I think currently we don't see a, a, a rapid uh, dec declining. Uh, it's hard uh, to predict it too, because it, at the end of the day, it's it's the social experience, it's the anti-vaxxers, uh, it's people being willing to wear masks and all that. So you, you don't you don't know how which way that's going to swing. Uh, one thing you mentioned, you know, the October seventh. Economic Association and the discussion of diversification. That is really a, an important meeting, I think, um, because when we come out the other side, that could make a big difference. Um, and, uh, and assuming, as I will, uh, that a lot of people would like to see tourism, you know, be constrained going forward, then diversification takes a, an important role, not only for um, tourism itself, but for the workforce who would like a better a better job. Um, so that would be a very interesting uh, conference, I think. But let me go to one last question, and I don't want to, I don't want to short shrift your charts and graphs because I know Eugene that economists live on charts and graphs. That's that's your product right there. So yeah. can we look at uh, your forecast charts, uh, both in the numbers and in the uh, in the lines, and just have you describe them quickly and show how uh, they support uh, an optimistic view. Yes, um, our forecast that you can see uh, from uh, the, the table on the screen actually uh, to go uh, from the lower part of the table, it shows a percentage. I think that may be uh, easier to understand. We do hope that, you know, in terms of publishing or from the 2020 census, we do have a 1.46 million uh, pop resident population not including uh, military uh, present in the state. Uh, we do uh, see uh, hope that uh, there will be a very small increase, a 0.1% increase in the this year and next year, a small increase into the future for population. And the visitor arrivals we expect will be 6.8 million visitors for this year. And currently we already have a 3.6 million already as of uh, uh, July. So there will be, uh, we still have another uh, five months to go. And this forecast uh, does uh, indicate that uh, we expect uh, September and uh, October will be slow. Two months will be about 50% of the 2019 level. But if it lasts longer than October, the number will be smaller. But uh, this is our uh, projection about 6.8 million visitors. You, if you look at the second line, actually, the visitor industry is not going to recover completely until 2025. So the number up to 2024, you see we have 10.2 million visitors. That is still lower than the 2019 level of 10.4 million. So it takes five, six years for the tourism industry to recover. So if you look at the expenditure, because of the inflation, the visitor spending in terms of uh, nominal dollars it will be um, 18 billion in 2024 is higher than 2019. But if you deflate with the uh, inflation, it will be smaller as well. So you look at the uh, uh, GDP, the last line um, for, for the upper table, you look at 2019, the total GDP is 18, uh, 82.5 billion, 82.5 billion. So if you look at the uh, forecast into the future, we will recover by 2024. So the economy is not going to be recovered until 2024. So it take a few years. So this uh, means that uh, we are not going to be fully recovered until 2024 in terms of uh, 
the uh, size of the economy, we call the real gross domestic product. So um, we need to be patient and the economy will take a few years to recover. And if you look at the job count, you look at the uh, non-agricultural wage and salary jobs. In 2019, we have about 658,500. So if you look at the uh, jobs by 2024, we are still lower. So in terms of uh, tourism, in terms of jobs, we are not going to recover completely by 2025, which is beyond our uh, forecasting period. So that is uh, the, uh, basically our forecast. The, uh, yeah, that, well, that's, that's really great. That's, that's, thank you so much for coming on. Um, but I think you and I can agree that nothing is carved in stone here. And you're going to be looking at this um, in every what, few weeks or every month. And, and you may find factors and variables that change. And your you know, forecast here that we've just described, that could change. And when that changes, Eugene, I hope you'll come back on ThinkTech and we can talk about the changes and how the forecast changes, no? Yes, we do forecast every quarter. So next one will be in November. Okay. We'll make, yeah, we'll make the adjustment. <laughs> I'm making a note. <laughs> <laughs> Eugene Tian, a Hawaii state economist. It's been so nice to talk with you and get a handle on these things. Really appreciate um, you know, the uh, examination, evaluation you make, the analysis you make. And I think it helps us all understand where we are and where we're going. Thank you so much, Eugene. You're welcome. My pleasure.